My brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Zebedee's sons, James and John, approached Jesus. Teacher, they said, we want you to grant our request. What is it? Jesus asked. They replied, See to it that we sit one at your right and one at your left when you come into your glory. Jesus told them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup I will drink or be baptized in the same bath of pain as I? We can, they replied. Jesus said in response, From the cup I drink of, you will drink. The bath I am immersed in, you will share. But as for sitting at my right or my left, that is not mine to give. It is for those to whom it has been reserved. The other ten on hearing this became indignant at James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know how among the Gentiles those who seem to exercise authority lord it over them? Their great ones make their importance felt. It cannot be like that with you. Anyone among you who aspires to greatness must serve the rest. Whoever wants to rank first among you must serve the needs of all. The promised one has not come to be served, but to serve to give one life in ransom for the many. My brothers and sisters, the good news of our salvation. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon again, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great to be here with all of you. Welcome. Wow, what a powerful scripture reading that we hear in Mark. It's powerful indeed. You know, we've heard other similar uh, gospel readings in the sense of the call, in the sense of uh, James and John and them wanting to have this uh, type of request granted onto them. So with that, we think about, I started to make you think of all the wonderful servitude things that we do, especially here in the parish of St. Francis and Clare. And I was thinking of the many different things that, that's happened and what all of you do. And I see that as an example, even for myself. And I just simply thinking of just things just to point out, like Joe, uh, Joe Ronza, in the sense that look at all the paintings that he painted in our gathering room. And to me, that's like servitude. That's like service. So he's, he, what he gave is a gift of himself to this wonderful community. And I look at Brother Ivan, who always gently, simply, always as a hospitality minister, welcomes everyone in the door. And of course, our own beloved pastor, Father Joe. And how he's always here, himself and Father Vitti, continually always serving us as a parish community. So I started thinking of this theme as we have in the reading, service, service, not only thinking about of ourselves, but of others. And it made me think back when I was young and the last Roman parish that Honey and I were in, at St. Andrews the Apostle in uh, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, I was always impressed by the two permanent deacons that served there. They would always come to Mass, either by themselves or with their spouse, the Mass before or the night before that they were actually serving. So they only just didn't come to Mass just to serve and put vestments on. They came also, not only called to serve at the altar, but again, as a lay, as a lay member in a sense to be among the community at large. And that always impressed me. And I'm not saying that I'm putting anyone down for that. But a small, simple act like that is what always impresses me. So again, I'm thinking about always servitude, servitude. So we even hear even too recently, and if you had the opportunity, it's very easy to look up, that Pope Francis is uh, one of his recent encyclicals, Angelium Gaudium, where he speaks about sort of like that servitude, being like a servant to others. So we can always, we're going to go into all these different things of service, but you pretty much have the gist of it and the idea of it that you know that once you give yourself up and you're serving, you feel good about it and you get something back out of that for yourself. Somebody the other day simply stated to me that, mentioning that how um, I've helped out at 
did different things, did this, did that. And they said, well, they said to me, are you doing this because you want to look good or are you really doing it to help? Hmm. And I was just like taken aback for a little bit. And I said, like, why am I being offended? You know, but it's like, wow, am I really doing it just to be able to be acknowledged by it? Or am I really doing it by me serving the others, those who I've served? So then again, it just started me having thinking, going back into servitude, into service. As most of you know, recently, when Honey and I since just retired and we moved to Florida, I spent some time with the Benedict de Monks of Western Priory. So this past summer, it was just a great opportunity for me to help the brothers in the sense of helping them with all their animals, the pigs, the sheep, any possible the rabbits, uh, anything that they possibly had, helping mowing, gardening, some light construction projects. So, you know, I was able to take that opportunity to really reflect and pray for myself and discern certain things as well. And it was a fabulous time to be with them. And I'm saying that, okay, service. I look at them, how they service the community at large there, at their monastery, but also in the sense that maybe they've gotten uh, a little older in a sense and maybe needed just a little bit of help. Not that much help, but just a little bit of help. So it kind of like enabled me to help them in their service towards others. And we know what that service is. That's like deep in our core. In my former employment, it also made me think about how sometimes the people who I worked with were sometimes what we call one way. Now one way, you know you can't be one way because then you're only taking care or worried about yourself. Now I'm not saying that we need to give up ourselves and let people abuse us. But yet again, we get that good feeling when we see ourselves helping others. And I'm saying this in a judgmental way, but we know that we get a lot out of it where we lower ourselves and be able to help those who are in need around us. And it also helps to fulfill ourselves. And it, it's such a reciprocal feeling. You help them, you're also helped back in return. And blessings, and so many abundant things happen and come forth. So realizing again with service, it can't be one way because it's not about me. So then we have James and John looking so much towards the future, not living in the now and the present moment. So they're worrying about going out there, like what's gonna happen to us? But sisters and brothers, when something like that occurs and we see James and John, it's, it's not even necessary to be worried about being who's gonna be able to be at Jesus' side, either at Jesus' left or Jesus' right. Nothing to do with that at all. But it comes to the point that if we know that we are doing the will of God, the Father, our Creator, then it won't even really matter for us to even simply ask where are we going to be at a certain point? Whether in this world, in the here and now, or in the next life, when we transition. That's the act of it, and that's the transformation. That's what we go through. So when we choose to serve, we have to be careful that we are not judgmental in our service, only feeling comfortable with whom we choose to serve, rather than hearing who God is calling us to serve. It could be our enemies, it could be someone who jolts us, someone who's distasteful to us. But they responded to you, they responded to us, they responded to me. Whether we like it or not, they're going to be in our lives. But they're there in our life for a reason. So it could be something simple that they might trigger in us. It could trigger a flaw in us. And then we react to that flaw. And within ourselves that we don't want to address and therefore, we reject that person in need. That's what we have to be careful for. That's what we have to be mindful of. And that's what we have to always continually keep correcting ourselves about. As you know in the gospel readings, when you hear the story, you know, of, of the man, of the person who was hurt and robbed, and of all the three different people that passed them, Jesus simply says, that was a person in need. That person needed to be stopped and taken care of. And someone did. But what happens when those times that we haven't stopped to take care of the person simply right next to us, or in our family, or at work, a coworker, or even someone simply here in our parish community? I know no one's perfect, nor am I saying am I perfect, but this is what we do to continue to challenge ourselves and each other. And if we stay focused on God, we'll be able to hear God's call to us to say, you know what, this person is in need. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that we need to do big things. It could just simply be that the person just needs a simple phone call during the week. How you doing? I saw you struggling on Sunday. Is there anything I could do to help? 
or maybe even simply our prayers for some of us that have certain limitations. And yes, too, that could be enough. So we need to be mindful of that and to see those who are around us, to be able to build up and lift up and encourage those and not be also the ones, along with some others, unfortunately, that may be helping to tear people down. And that's what we need to be careful of. And this is what Jesus calls us to. And as we heard in the readings today, I'd like to just simply share with you one more thing. In 2 Peter, it's written, Brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble. You will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be richly provided for you. So kind of like in a way, even without having to ask, as James and John did, the answer was already there. It didn't even need to be asked. And yes, with something like that, it's okay to assume, because we know the final outcome, what it will be. Amen? Amen. Amen.